Well, good morning and happy Friday to you. Yes, Stella's on Friday morning again. I, I am. T- it is just such a beautiful day. I, I hope the, I hope my uh, my neighbor's lawn equipment stays at bay so they won't mess up my video this morning. Although I'm not going to be very long. I just wanted to get on here and just really encourage somebody today. Um, I put on my post that this morning, good morning, Felicia, as you guys come on, go ahead and share, tag me, uh, put it out there. I just, I just, I feel like I've got an encouraging word. Well, for those who have been around me for any length of time, you know that the past three years, Stella had been going through a long, hard arduous divorce and I am happy to say baby girl it's free <laughs> yes it is done it is over it is behind me and I tell you I'm I don't I just about don't know what to do with myself I'm so thankful I am truly thankful to God that that chapter of my life is at long last behind me and I am looking forward to everything that the future has to offer. Things are just, I'm just looking forward to it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. God is good. And so this morning as I was just feeling um, in, in my feelings, feeling emotional and grateful, Tammy, I was just thankful that God had brought me through it intact. My soul is whole, Dwayne. My heart is at peace. My thoughts are intact. Uh, My vision is in front of me. Um, I don't feel like I lost a lot of ground, although I do have some areas that I've got to catch up. You know, you come out of something that takes that long. You have some catch up work to do. Um, But for those people who are still going through stuff, who are still in it, who are still, whether it's your issue, what I don't know what your thing is. I don't know if your thing, your, my thing was a divorce, um, but I don't know what your thing is. Whatever your thing is, I got a message for you today. Whatever you're dealing with and going through, I got a word for you today. Because one of my passages that was my go-to when I found myself having thought systems that were inconsistent with the outcomes I wanted to create for my life, whether that's the enemy's attempt to drop thoughts of suicide into your head, and rest assured, folks, no one, let me say it again, no one is exempt from the enemy throwing that dart into your thoughts. In fact, it is one of the last ditch effort strategies that the enemy will always bring to people when you're going through stuff. He is consistent. It is a pattern. It is a tool. And the word of God says, don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. And if you understand that, if you realize that when you are going through something, whether it's dealing with a sickness, whether it's dealing with a life issue, whether it's dealing with, um, you know, a divorce, what, whatever the issue is. The word of God gives us options. We have choices. We get to pick what we're going to do and how we're going to. So in Psalms 27, there's a passage where David was praying and David was actually in a worshipful moment as he and th- throughout his encounters with God. And one of his quotes was, I would have fainted except I chose to believe. And that's what I want to talk about this morning really briefly the choice to believe what are you choosing to believe what are you choosing to think what are you choosing to meditate on because all thought processes tammy and said cedric uh cameron are a choice we choose to believe whatever goes through our mind and if the things that are going through your mind are not working for you i love what graham cook says he says if the thoughts that you're having aren't producing the outcomes and the desires that you want have another thought pick another one You get to choose what you think about. You get to choose what you meditate on. You get to choose what goes through your mind. You don't have to take the thoughts that come and just feel like that. that's your lot in life, Felicia. To Sean, you don't have to take those thoughts. Not only do you not have to, you don't have to take them, you don't have to continue to meditate on them. You can change the way you think. You can change your thought systems at any moment in time. So when things are going, through your mind that are inconsistent with what God thinks about you, have another thought. 
David said in Psalms 27, I would have fainted. Let's look at that word. Let's, in fact, let's break this down. First of all, David said, I would have. He didn't say I, that, that, that's, 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 that falls into that category of coulda, woulda, shoulda. I could have. I would have. I would have fainted, which means it was an option. It was not all. It wasn't etched in stone. It wasn't guaranteed. I had a choice. David said, I would have fainted. Now that word faint means yield and give in to, to, ca to cave in. It means to cave in. Now, what are you caving into? You could be caving into a thought system. You could be caving into a, a, a lie about yourself. You could be caving in to lies that other people are saying. Whatever you are yielding to is what you are, it, it, it is what is indicative of fainting. So when David says, I would have fainted. He says, I would have caved in. He says, I, the pressures that life was piling on me, the pressures, I, the, the lies that people are saying that are hurting you, that are wounding you. You don't have to take those thoughts. You know, it's not true. You know it. You know, it's not true. You know that what they're saying is not true. And since you know, it's not true. Why are you dwelling on that stuff? So David says, I would have fainted, except I chose to believe. So fainted, I would have caved in, given in, Iris, to thought systems that were lies, that were inconsistent with God's purpose. They were not what, they were not what God was thinking about me. And I, what, what, another one of my, my distance mentors, Bill Johnson, has a great quote. He says, I refuse to think anything about myself that God does not think about me. So what thoughts or what lies are you believing about yourself that God doesn't believe about you, that God doesn't say about you, that God doesn't speak about you? If God doesn't say you stupid, why are you saying that about yourself? If God doesn't say you'll never get out of debt, why are you saying that about yourself? If God doesn't say you are, you are a failure, why are you saying that about yourself? That stuff puts a weight on your soul. It weighs you down. It's heavy. You don't have to take on that. David said, I would have fainted. I would have caved in under the weight of all those lies and deceptions, except for the fact that I choose to believe in the goodness of God in the land of the living. Now, here's another thing that said that because suicide is epidemic, not just in this country, but around the world, people are taking their lives at unprecedented rates because they don't understand that what you believe will either add hope to your circumstance or subtract hope from you. Hope deferred without hope, when hope is postponed, when it is set aside, it will make you sick at heart so that the when we're sick at heart it weakens our ability to stand up against the pressures that come against us now here's the thing about that the word of god says pressures are nothing more than weighty cares their weights and their cares and you don't have to take them you can literally cast them cast them aside you know when you're going through stuff I, you know i like that question what's the worst thing that could happen you know, what's the, okay, so they're talking about you. What's the worst thing that can happen? What's the, somebody, they, people lie. Okay, get over it. What's the, it, they, they, is it, are they taking any food off your table? No, they're not. So what do you choose to believe? What thoughts do you choose to believe? So while I was going through some of the worst of the time frames that I was dealing with in my own life, um, I would go and I would periodically write things down. I have a journal. In fact, I should have had it, but it's upstairs in my, by my nightstand. I have a journal, a, dec a, a, a prophetic word journal, where when I receive a prophetic word, I write it down and then I go back and periodically I read it because those are some of the things that I choose to believe. When, when, when the enemy was saying, you're going to lose your house. I love my home. I love my environment. I love living in South Mississippi. When the enemy was saying, you're going to lose your home, you're going to, this going to happen and that's going to happen. You know what? I said, you know what? I prayed and I said, Lord, what do you say? And the word of God says, this book going to get them. The word of God says that the Lord gives us houses that we didn't build, land that we, he gives us. He, he, and so I went back to that promise. 
I wrote it down in my book and I said, Lord, I thank you for possession of my home. I thank you for possession of my rental properties. When I, when it looked like I was going to lose it, when it looked like it wasn't going to happen, when it looked like that, that the enemy was bigger than me, I had to go back to what did the what did the what was the prophetic word and the promises that God had made about my life. And that's what I had to choose to believe. So let me ask you again, what are you choosing to believe? What is a choice? What are you choosing? What thoughts are you picking? If it's not working, have another thought. Pick another one. So there are a couple of things that I want to encourage you, thoughts that you can pick with intentionality. Okay, let's go over. The first ones are thoughts of identity. Okay, so you're going to align your thought systems with decrees and promises that confirm the identity that God has given. So what is one of those identities? You know, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Now that sounds real religious and real fancy, but what does it really mean? It means I am okay because Jesus has paid the price for all my failures, all my shortcomings, all my all my wrongs and so I am I'm all right with God I'm okay with him he's not mad at me he's not angry with me he's not talking about me he's not putting me down he's not looking at me saying I can't believe Stella messed up again I can't believe Stella thinking those thoughts I can't God is not looking at me going I can't believe this child he's not that ain't who he is so I need to recognize thoughts of identity and I need to put those I have to choose to believe them with intentionality I choose to believe thoughts of another uh, another a thought of that relates to my identity. I am God's beloved. I am God's beloved. Thank you, Iris. I appreciate that. And you know, I love I love that phrase, that word beloved, because when it's when we're talking about cho choices and what I'm gonna believe, I'm choosing to believe. I would have fainted except I chose to believe. So what are you choosing to believe? So the first things you're going to choose to believe are thoughts that relate to your identity that God thinks about you. Thoughts that relate. And there are a whole lot of them. I'm just telling you a few of my go-tos, okay? So I choose to believe that I am God's beloved. His beloved. Be loved. That means... All I have to do, like a baby in its mother's arms, a brand new baby. My my niece just had a had a uh, my niece uh, uh, had a beautiful baby boy, and as I saw the pictures of her holding him, and I saw the picture, all that baby has to do is be loved. He doesn't have to. He can poop. He can pee. He can, and all he all he do is eat, put food in one end, and it come out the other. It, he doesn't have to do anything. And yet, he is his parents' beloved. He doesn't have to earn it. He doesn't have to do anything. He is beloved. And just like that baby, I'm God's beloved. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to earn it. Of course, I set my goals. Of course, I go after maximizing my potential in him. Of course, I want to do those things. But if I fail, if I fall short, he's not going to love me any less or any more. So my second thought that relates to my identity is I am God's beloved. And all I have to do to earn his love is just be loved. Another one of my go-to thoughts that relate to my identity is um, God it is my relationship with Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave. So whatever I need, God has already given it. It's already provided. So I don't have to struggle. I don't have to stress about where is this going to come from. And you know, I love one of my mentors. His name was Muhammad Nasruddin. He's gone. He started an organization called Recycling Black Dollars. And uh, one of the things that Muhammad taught me when I was coming off welfare, he told me this truth and I never forgot it. I internally it and I made it a part of my soul's thought system infrastructure he said never be moved by the absence or presence of money he says whether you got a lot or whether you have a little whether your account is overdrawn and I've been there I've been there. in fact ain't been too long hadn't been too long why because there are circumstances sometimes that you can't control 
There's stuff that happens that you can't control. So when it happens, what you gonna do? There have been times when I've had I've had tens of thousands of dollars in my account, and there have been times when it's overdrawn. And I don't. What do you do? I know that my sufficiency is of God, and that the state that I'm in, this is not my state. This is not this. You know, my identity is writ is hidden in God. And so as I came out of those circumstances, as I came out of those situations, I get to rest in my identity, in knowing that my God is my provider, that he is the source and the sustainer. He sourced my life, Letha. He started my life, Marcus, and he is going to sustain me, okay? Now, we're talking about our go-through thoughts. My go-to, David says, I would have fainted except I chose to believe. So we're talking about the thoughts we choose to believe. What are you choosing to believe? So the first category of thoughts that I choose to believe are thoughts that relate to my identity. The next category that I choose to believe are thoughts that relate to my development. So when the enemy says, when there's something that I need to master, that I need to learn, and the enemy says, you know, you, that's too hard for you. I said, you know, devil is a lie. There is nothing too hard. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There is a force field inside of me working to establish every skill, every capacity, every ability, every capability that I need to accomplish whatever God has set before me. It's in me. And the Spirit of God her, he hears me. So I know that I choose to believe that I can do it. It may be hard in the beginning because everything is hard when you first learn how. Everything. So I choose to believe that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And if I, if it's something that my, that my capacity does not incorporate into my potential, I don't need it. Because everything that I need, the word of God says that all, God gives us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So everything that pertains to the substance of my life, to the sustaining of my life, to the strengthening of my life, to the building of my life. God, he, everything, he gives us all things. Not only does he give them to us, but he gives them to us to enjoy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. He gives them to us to enjoy all things, Letha. So no matter what we go through, no matter what we've been through, he is there to sustain us, to keep us, to hold us, to embrace us, to encourage us, to build us up, and to make us everything he determined we could be when he thought of us in his mind. I would have fainted, except I chose to believe in the goodness of God, in the land of the living. So the first category are thoughts. I choose to believe thoughts that relate to my identity. Second category, I choose to believe thoughts that relate to my potential, okay? Third category, I choose to relate, I choose to, I choose to believe thoughts that relate to my dreams and the vision for my life. I have got, you know, I have visions, I have ideas, I have things that I want to see happen. Yes, Zyra, I'll tag you. I'm going to tag, I hope I can get this tag on here. Sometimes I take, touch this thing and it don't work. Ah, there we go. But yes, I choose to believe it. It's what I want. It's what I want to do. It's my hopes. It's my dream. It's my goal. It's my passion. It's my longing. It's my innermost desire. I choose to believe that those things can yet be. As long as I have breath in my body, breath in my lungs, life in my body, then anything God has put in my heart, I can. I, I, I still believe it's possible. I, some things I may not achieve till I'm 97. Okay, that's okay. Because as long as there is breath in my lungs and life in my body, I can do it. I can be it. I can have it. I can possess it. So I choose to believe. So whatever you're going through right now, whatever you are experiencing, whatever you're challenged with, choose to believe that God is with you. 
choose to believe that your life is great that yes there are things happening in the world that I don't like there are things going on in the environment that I don't appreciate there are things happening in nature that are just you know there are hurricanes there are tornadoes there are storms there there are people shooting each other there's but I don't have to believe I have to I don't have to put my I don't have to put that stuff in my head I don't have to be fearful I don't have to believe oh god the enemy somebody going to shoot you you go into Walmart they going to say shooting at Walmart. I choose to believe that the angels of the Lord encamp around about me and that wherever I go, I am a freaking, I am a freaking protection force field that just because I'm there, everybody in the vicinity is safe because not only do I carry angels that accompany me, but I carry angels that protect every person who is within my immediate vicinity. Why? Because I decree the words of Psalms 91, the words of God. I, you know, this is what I choose to believe. I don't choose to believe and be fearful. That, that all kind of negative things are going to happen. Now, they may happen. The word of God in Psalms 91 says a thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but he promised it shall not come near me. And if you happen to be close by, bless you, baby, you get some of my extra protection overflow because God promised to send his angels. He has given his angels charge over me. I choose to believe that no evil shall befall me and no harm shall come to happen to me. I choose to believe that the enemy can't even get close to me. Why? Because the angels are between me and them and their assignment by God. Well, this is what I choose to believe. Their assignment by God is to keep me safe. I choose to believe as my mother spoke before she died, she said things. I choose to believe that her words and her faith still speaks. And my mother said, she says, none of my children will die in accidents. None of my children will experience horrible deaths. None of my children. And she used to say this stuff. And so I choose to believe that God is still honoring her faith, Patricia. I choose to believe. I choose to believe that when I say no evil shall befall my child, no harm shall come to have to. I dwell in the secret place of the most high God. I abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I confidently trust and rely. For surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. Surely he shall protect me. Why? That's what I choose to believe. I choose to believe. I choose to believe. So let me ask you, what do you choose to believe? What are you choosing to believe? David says, I would have fainted, except I chose to believe. What beliefs are you choosing with intentionality? What beliefs are you thinking on purpose? What beliefs are you meditating on? What beliefs are forming your identity? Because we get to choose what we believe. We get to choose. We get to choose. We get to choose. And what you choose, you believe. And what you believe forms the basis for the life and the world you're going to live in tomorrow. I believe, as I have decreed, I started, did a class last month about my finances. Coming out of a divorce is hard. It hits you hard. It hits you hard. You lose a lot of ground. You lose a lot of money. You pay, you pay attorneys and all that stuff. I choose to believe that all of that weight and every bit of it will be gone. By the end of this year, all of that stuff will be gone. I choose to believe that my income will be back over $100,000 by the end of this year. I choose to believe the word of God says that whatsoever you believe when you pray. That this is the confidence that we have. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, then I know that I have the petition that I ask of him. I choose to believe that that word is true. So I choose to believe that the Lord is going to restore everything that the enemy stole. I choose to believe that even as my ex-husband is has had his challenges, I choose to believe that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And the Lord will turn his heart so that he will become everything God predestined him to be. When God thought of him in his mind, the enemy will have no soul that has ever been associated with me. He will not have any victory over any person that's ever been touched. I choose to believe, Alejandra and Stephanie, that God 
is working in my life and in the life of every human being that has ever come in touch with me. I choose to believe that no person who's ever come under the sound of my voice will be lost and go to hell. I decree it in Jesus' name it that if they hear my voice, according to the scriptures, the word says that if you hear his voice, harden not his harden not your heart. How do you hear the voice? How does the how does God get a voice in the earth? When I speak his word, God's voice is heard. So he says, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. So how does God's word get a voice in the earth? I speak it. So if I say when people hear my voice, they will not harden their heart. They will not. They will hear God. They will receive him. They will come to know him. Well, I choose to believe. I choose to believe that. I choose to believe. So you know what? When you choose the right thoughts and you believe the right thoughts, you get to live the life that you choose. You live the life that you create, Tammy. Yes, you live the life that you desire. You live the life that you hope for. So I want to thank you guys for being on here today with me. I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm thankful. I'm so hopeful that God, I choose to believe that I am seeing the goodness of God in the land of the living. I'm seeing the restoration of everything the enemy stole. I'm seeing increase in areas. I tell you what, you guys, I have a brand new book that's coming out. It's called Becoming Kyle. And there is a whole section on that book that talks about our thought systems that are part of becoming Kyle. In other words, acquiring the warrior's mindset so that you're not looking at difficulties and opposition, cowering and giving in and being fearful and failing and falling, but that you look at it as an opportunity that God has brought you, that God allowed you so that you can increase, grow, develop, become stronger. And at the end of every difficulty, there is spoil. At the end of every battle, there is spoil. And so you get to, you and I, we get to take the responsibility spoil because when David oh gosh when David had to go after the after Ziglag when they had kidnapped his wife and his kids when he was and he and God he prayed he said God what do I do and God says he's David says what do I do he says shall I go after them God says yes go after it because surely you will recover all I choose to believe that I'm going to recover everything that the enemy took from me I choose that I choose to believe that I choose to believe that all my rental properties, I have great tenants in every property. I choose to believe that by this time next year, I will have bought some more. I choose to believe, hallelujah, that I am one in a billion, that EBW, that's uh, Ingrid Vanderbilt, as an uh, amazing woman. And I started my first online uh, business acceleration class with her this week. Amazing class. I'm so excited. I can't wait to finish my homework. It's business except I choose to believe that every resource that I need to get to the next level, that God has already put it in front of me. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And so Ingrid showed up and she has a mission called Empowering a Billion Women. And one of her goals for North America is to help one million women women go over the million dollars in revenue mark. I choose to believe that I am one in that billion. I'm one of those. I choose to believe. Why? Because the kingdom of God suffers violence, economic attacks against it. And God's kingdom needs resource so that we can establish the covenant in the earth. There are programs I want to establish. There are educational resources. There's a Kyle University that I want to launch. I choose to believe that God is going to provide it and I'm going to do everything that he has put in my heart. So be careful what you choose to believe. Oh, wow. Well, I'm out of time. I am out of time. Let me say a couple of things. If there is, I have a brand new book, Becoming Kyle, uh, the, the workbook edition. We'll have two editions coming out. We're going to have the workbook edition, which will be, it is actually uh, getting, um, it is ready for, it's at the editors now, getting it cleaned up, getting it finished up, getting, you know, tidying up. Um, you can order it. Go to my website, StellaPayton.com. You guys, and people tell me all the time, Stella, I love you. I thought, well, you know what? You love me. Show me you love me. Buy some, buy some of my resource if you love me sign up for our class I got a new class that we'll be doing and I believe the next class is October 10th or 11th it's a Thursday night it's the second week of October I believe but that class is kind of, is called the education deception it's the deception where people have been have been duped our young people and not just y'all young people there are a significant amount of older Americans middle-aged Americans who are still struggling with student loan debt that they acquired you know 5 10 15 years ago and they still haven't paid it off they've been paying and so what we're talking about about in the education deception is helping our young adults and even middle-aged people understand how wealth happens. It just doesn't happen.
happen and you have to have a strategy and education. There was a time when getting an education would facilitate you really moving up in economic in, 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 in your economic levels. But that's not necessarily the case anymore because so many people are graduating from college. The average student loan debt right now is somewhere between um, thirty and forty thousand dollars for most people. So you graduating from school with a thirty, forty thousand dollars, and in many instances, I, I talked to one young lady with a hundred and thirty-three thousand dollars in student loan debt, and she's not even a doctor. That's just a four-year degree and a master's. What you gonna do? How you gonna do that? How you gonna pay that? And so we're talking about the education deception, helping people understand that there are specific pathways that you can get on, specific roads you can take to get to wealth. How do you do that? And so the education deception will be the second week of October. The class will launch. Uh, it should be posted uh, by over within the next day or two. Um, student loans are awful. Yes, they are. And there is a way that you can get rid of them. There are strategies that you can employ to move them on as quickly as possible because the longer you have them, the harder they are to get rid of. If you have a strategy to eliminate that student loan debt within the first five years you, of, your, of graduating from college, you will be okay. And if you don't you will likely struggle with that debt for years and years and years to come and that ain't how it's supposed to be I love you guys thank you so much the book is out now Alejandra it, it will ship the first wave of the books will ship you can pre-order it now they will ship October 7th it's called becoming Kyle using ancient wisdom for modern day success this is actually going to be book one in the series that I will be releasing and in this particular series in book one we're going to be talking about the 12 manifestations first of all what is Kyle and what is the Kyle anointing and how do you recognize it and know when you are living under the influence of that anointing what does it look like what are the what are the characteristics and how can you activate it in your own life powerful book one of the most I mean I'll, everything I write is good but this book was different because what made this book different from things that I've written in the in the past in the past I wrote the book this book wrote me again let me say it again in the past, I wrote the book, but this book wrote me. It wrote, there were elements of my being that were under construction, and writing the book established new dimensions of who I am in God. Um, I'll tell you a little, I, I, I know I'm a little over, but I'll tell you how that happens. One of the first chapters in this book um, talks about the Kyle anointing carries with it um, a requirement of metamorphosis that you experience an inner transformation and that as I was writing I was seeing myself and recognizing the inner transformation transformation that has been happening in my life over these last probably really five years so I feel like a butterfly who came out of the chrysalis uh, there's another comp a part in the book where I talk about the imaginal cells that inside every worm inside every base lowly caterpillar crawling around on a tree there are cells called imaginal disc and in those cells are the image of the wings and the proboscis and the 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 abdomen it all of the components necessary to to fly are inside the caterpillar they're in there but the caterpillar has to go through the metamorphosis and once it experiences the metamorphosis it gets to soar with God it gets to fly high it is so good this book is so good it's called becoming Kyle please go and order one you guys please 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 pre-order and then the um, Amazon version will be available by the end of October the middle to the end of October it'll be on Amazon and there'll be two versions there's a workbook version that I'm releasing but then there for some people just like to read they just want to read the information so you'll have both okay both of them will be out becoming Kyle you can go to my click on my page on uh, here on Facebook you can on every link if you click on the pictures on all of my pages you'll get to read a little bit about the book read a little bit of content and then you'll also you can pre-order there thank you so much for being with me today Mwah! and I challenge you today choose to believe in the goodness of God because he is only good in the land of the living and until we meet next time you make it a terrific day bye-bye <laughs>